My name is Mark San in Japanese. And uh, well, um, they asked me to talk to you for 45 minutes or 50 minutes about what I've done, what I do, what it's like in Tokyo, and uh, show you some, some work and have a chat. But uh, so if I can do it in 45 minutes, great. So I'll, I'll do a very quick uh, review of what I've done. Um, as uh, I'm now senior creative director at uh, TBWA Hakahodo. Hakahodo is uh, the second largest agency in Japan, uh, supposedly the most creative. It's uh, Hakahodo is huge in Japan. You know, if you if you go and get a taxi and just say I'm from Hakahodo, they know exactly where you are. It's like you're treated as God in uh, Japan. Um, the Japanese, if you get a contract with Hakahodo, it's a job for life. They work at the agency from the time they graduate to the time they retire. Um, TBWA Hakahodo is a joint venture between TBWA and Hakahodo. Uh, we officially did it um, three years ago. The reason being was to create a unique and distinctive agency in Japan. Uh, predominantly for the global clients that we have both in the two agencies and more importantly I suppose for Nissan, Nissan cars. My role is uh, as I say senior creative director predominantly on the Nissan car business that's what, what I'm there for. Uh, prior to Tokyo I was in Paris at TBWA G1 as creative director for Nissan Europe and prior to that, I was in Amsterdam, where Nissan was in Europe, and I was uh, brought in um, by a friend of mine who was uh, having problems with the Nissan car account then, and asked if I would join to help them on the repitch. And uh, from there, I sort of stayed in Amsterdam. And then Nissan moved to uh, Paris, so I moved to Paris and was in Paris for six years and then while I was there um, they kept on wanting me to go to Japan because uh, head office etc and I would always say no um, it was uh, a nice place to visit on business trips and uh, talk to the clients but the idea of living there was uh, scary but also challenging, and then uh, one day I said yes, and that was six years ago. Um, Tokyo is uh, the most amazing place ever, I think. <laughs> and I've lived in every country you can imagine and worked. Um, it's an amazing uh, country, city, and the hardest place to live. Uh, you're called a gaijin, which is foreigner, um, when I joined, I joined, uh, some of you may not know this, but uh, if you've seen the film Lost in Translation, um, I, the day before I left for Japan, I watched the film and I live the Lost in Translation scenario most days. Um, I am, TBW Hakahodo is an agency of 380 people and I'm the only non-Japanese at the agency. Um, you've got to be a certain type of guy to do it. Uh, and I've, I've always, in my career, been the guy who sort of uh, likes to challenge, I suppose. And uh, if it wasn't for my assistants, translators, uh, I wouldn't survive because um, of those 380, about 2% speak English. But my, my role there is, is predominantly for the Nissan car account. Uh, I have a joint role within TBW Hakahodo and what they call TBW Hakahodo International. I'm, the cre I'm called this global creative director for the Nissan predominantly Asian market. I'm sure you know a guy called Rob Schwartz from TBW Chart Day. Um, he looks after US and I look after Asia and uh, the rest. 
So I spend most of my time either in India, uh, China, Thailand, and I task force for Nissan either working with the agencies at the countries or I bring in my creative teams from all over the network who happen to be experts on that particular project. And uh, so I uh, most recently, because of the car business, India and China is the predominantly the key market. So I spend a lot of time in Mumbai and Guangzhou in China and uh, Bangkok and all those places. Um, so I'm the car boy. I don't love cars. Um, as you can see, I'm a Harley boy. Uh, I'm called the Beauty and the Beast in uh, Tokyo. Um, and I've been in the business, sadly, I suppose, 35, maybe 35 years now. Um, as I say, to try and tell you what I've done in 40 minutes would be impossible, but uh, I'm the sort of, I have various nicknames. The, the one the States call me is, I'm called the Colonel. <laughs> Mainly because I, uh, if any of you are English or know the way it works in England, uh, uh, I used to be a paratrooper, so uh, I spent, I was the only parachuting CD in London at the time, so I've, uh, I did 20 years in the parachute regiment while I was doing creative director. Um, people ask me where I come from, and again, it's very difficult to tell you where I'm from. Uh, I'm English, um, and I, the easiest answer I give is I'm London. In truth, uh, I was born in uh, Mauritius, in Africa. Um, I didn't go to England until I was 16, having lived and lived and been a difficult child in countries all over the world. Um, my parents, my father was uh, in the army, but in, an ar in the army that we don't talk about, so it was all very uh, tricky. So I didn't, didn't like school, I, st I ended up being a bit of a rebel and uh, came to England and went straight to art college. And uh, it was the time when I sort of, I did my communications advertising degree, although film and photography was my sort of uh, keen interest. And I ended up just pure luck by doing the, at the beginning of the pop video culture. So I started off making films for various artists uh, in England and uh, continued doing film and photography while I was an art director. Um, so I worked a lot in London, I worked in Spain, in Turin, when I was the creative director for Iveco Ford and Fiat. Um, various agencies in London, although we started up our own successful agency and then Spent six months to seven months every year shooting. Uh, I was always doing the photography, the stills and the TV shoots for uh, the car accounts, etc. And um, now I, I live in Tokyo, but spend very little time there. I'm sort of, as I say, in Mumbai and various other places. Um, so uh, I'm the Harley Davidson Riding Creative Director in Tokyo. Uh, the other nickname I have in Tokyo is Eric Clapton. Uh, because the Japanese are convinced I'm Eric Clapton. Um, why, I have no idea, but I, I, I have to wear a hat everywhere I go in Tokyo because that's my, that's the way they expect me to be. And w when I, when I, when I arrived in Tokyo, I, um, I, yes, I've always ridden Harleys, uh, but when I arrived in Tokyo, um, I can't buy clothes that fit me in Tokyo because they're very small, bless them. Um, and the only clothes I can buy was from a Harley shop in Tokyo because they still sell the American sizes. So now, 
it sounds very sad, but actually I quite like it. But I wear Harley clothes all the time. So I have thousands of Harley shirts. And uh, if you can imagine in Japan, um, it's very business orientated and, and Japan is a wonderful culture and uh, all the creatives, all the account guys are in suits, black and white and Harley boy. And uh, they accept it because that's who I am. And if I don't, it's, occasionally I'll, I'll not wear a Harley shirt to the office or to, to Nissan. And the, the reaction is, is unbelievable. They, they say, what's the matter, Mark? Are you leaving us or are you going to see a lawyer? So I have to wear Harley shirts every day. <laughs> so um, I've, uh, and, and as I say, what, one of the good things about Tokyo is it's, it's, there's no crime. So, you know, I've had endless bikes, Harleys stolen in Paris, in London, in Madrid, in Barcelona, in Amsterdam. Uh, in Tokyo, there's no such thing as uh, bikes being stolen or cars, so I can leave my Harleys wherever I want and they're just completely safe. Uh, it's one of the benefits of cruising in Tokyo on a Harley. Um, I've just had, just once I start talking about Harleys, I talk about it all the time, but I had one, uh, I have three. Um, one I had built um, in, in Tokyo, which was designed in Tokyo, and then all the bits were ordered from LA. And uh, uh, it's taken about six months to build, and uh, I left them to build it. And when I came back from a trip in Mumbai, they were so pleased to see me back. And I said, what's the problem? They said, well, we've been waiting for you to sit on the bike. And I said, well, why? And they, the reason is that because it's got such wide bars and foot pegs, the Japanese couldn't fit their feet onto the bars, so they couldn't measure up the bike to see if it worked until I got there, sat on it, and it worked. And, uh, and it was voted the custom bike of Japan. So it's a pretty cool bike, and it's called the Beast. Um, so if any of you are in Tokyo, you'll hear me and you'll see me driving to Starbucks. <laughs> I don't go much further than that, to be honest, because all the road signs are in Japanese <laughs> and I can't speak Japanese. And uh, anyway, that's, that's the life in Tokyo. <laughs>